He sat on the highest court in the country for almost 30 years. Justice Stephen Breyer, confirmed in 1994, helped shape the nation's laws through four presidential administrations and retired the same year of the Dobbs decision, which overturned the landmark abortion rights case Roe v. Wade. I sat down with Justice Breyer at Harvard Law School this week, where we discussed the controversial Dobbs decision and his new book, Reading the Constitution, in which he urges the justices to look beyond the words as originally written in the Constitution to the real-world consequences their rulings may have. You told the New York Times of the court today, something important is going on. What did you mean by that? No, I, I meant really what I've been writing here, that, that I don't, I think the most important uh, uh, thing or characteristic to focus on is a change in the way that people ha are interpreting in general this document and the statutes towards what did people originally, when this was written, what did they take these words to mean in general? Huh. See, it's, it's very attractive. You say that textualism, all you have to do is read this. Fabulous. You've got the answer. Uh, yeah, just read it. And it's simple. And it'll stop the judges from doing what they want. They'll be bound by the text. You say, sounds good. Sounds good but it doesn't work very well, in my opinion. And that's why I've spent a year and a half trying to explain why. Let me ask you about the immunity case, if mm -hmm. I could. Um, in April, the court is going to hear arguments about Donald Trump's claim to be immune from criminal prosecution for his efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Why do you think the court took the case, and was it necessary for the court to take the case? No, that's another kind. See, if I'm sitting around the table, I've read the briefs, I've, and that isn't being coy. It's true. My goodness, you can make mistakes just by saying what your initial opinion is. And, and my goodness, how often it really occurs. I'm not just trying to get out of the question, because I can get out of the question by just saying I'm not going to answer the question. But, I, but, but the, the, the point is there's so many times when you think, look, this is how decision making, and I bet it's true for, for you, and I bet it's true for the people who work with you, and I bet it's true for business people and others, and that's why it's genuinely important to understand as best you can the details that are relevant to an important decision. And I think that's true of everyone who makes those decisions. But it's certainly true of the justice of the court. Let me try it this way. Were you surprised that they took up the case, or were you expecting them to? I, I didn't even... I, if, I may have thought about that, but I'm, that's too close. Too close. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask it this way. You are a judge who knows what it is like to take up a critical case in the middle of a presidential election. Can you that talk was Bush about, v. Gore, you mean? Yes, Bush yes. v. Gore. I do remember Can that. You talk and I about, wrote, in my opinion, I wrote they shouldn't have taken it up. That's what I thought about <laughs> yes. Bush v. Gore. I said they shouldn't have taken up the opinion, and now having taken it up, I think they should decide it the other way. That was my view, all right? But it was a view reached after a considerable amount of work. I know that you're not going to weigh in on the current cases before the court, but big picture, Justice Breyer, do you think that the people of this country deserve to know a verdict in the election subversion case before November, as a legal matter. <laughs> You're still going. I mean, you have a lot of good questions, but they're all aiming at the same place. Big picture. Yeah. Big, big picture. Or big picture. Do the people of this country deserve to know? Big picture. <laughs> the big picture before is November? I'm not going near a case that has to do with let that me, so much. That is an even bigger picture. Let me, <laughs> then, is, yeah, let yeah. me just ask yeah. you what? this. Can you tell me what you thought on January 6th as those events were unfolding? No. On January 6th, uh, I, I, no. The biggest picture is, to me, that I tell myself, don't go near these issues. <laughs> I was. I mean, was you know, there were many, 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 many advantages and privileges uh, when I think that I was a member of the Supreme Court of the United States. And there are a few disadvantages. And one of those disadvantages is don't sound off on things that are relevant, might become cases, etc. Uh, 
uh, particularly whether you're on the court or not. You were on the court. Well, let's let's talk about Dobbs. It will be two years since Dobbs, as you know, ended the constitutional right to get an abortion. You dissented. What do you think the impact of Dobbs has been? Well, has been. So what I put in this book, and I want to stick to that because Dobbs is a recent case. I said, I haven't said anything in this book that I didn't write mm -hmm. when I was on the court in a dissent. Yeah. And so in that dissent, the three of us wrote together, uh, Sotomayor, Kagan, and myself. And, and uh, one of the things we said is what we fear. They think this will be simpler, the majority, because it will leave it all up to the states. We don't think it will be simpler. We think that there will be a lot of more cases coming up. I mean, what's going to happen when a woman's life is at stake and she needs the abortion? Do you think if a state forbids that, that that won't come to the courts? I, well, we thought it probably would. And we thought there would be a lot of issues coming to the courts, coming out of, of the uh, uh, decision to overrule Roe versus Wade. That's what we said yeah. in the opinion. Well, and, and you also said the majority's refusal even to consider the life-altering consequences of reversing Roe and Casey is a stunning indictment of its decision. Those are very strong words. We, strong, we felt strongly yeah. on that case, yes. Well, and I guess the question is, do, is what you anticipated, has it come to pass? No, that's what I can't. I, I, I want to stay away from, I, it's not that I don't, yeah. have answers for these things in my mind. But I want to stay away publicly uh, from, uh, uh, st I want to stick as closely on a recent case as possible to what I said in this book. And I, and I did my best uh, uh, to stick to as close as possible uh, to what is already public. Well, in other words, we have totally opposite interests there because uh, my interest is not to make news. Well, <laughs> <No. laughs> I'm trying hard, I Justice know, Breyer. I know, I know, I know. Let me ask you, um, in Texas, there were estimated to be more than 26,000 rape-related pregnancies in the first 16 months after the state's near total abortion ban was in effect. And part of the dissent does talk about the concerns about a patchwork of laws. Is that part, was that part of your concern when you dissented to Roe being overturned? I, 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 I thought Roe should not be overturned. I thought Casey should not be overturned. Can you see a, a world, a possibility in which Dobbs is overturned one day in another 50 years, say? Don't know. It's possible? Oh, it's possible. But who knows? How disruptive was the leak to the court and to the relationships that you describe? It was unfortunate. Were you angry? You try to avoid getting angry where that effect. You try in, in a job, as a, you, you try to remain as calm, reasonable, and serious as possible. I think it was unfortunate, that leak. How much discussion was there about a potential compromise around 15 weeks? Well, you the... know as much about that as I do. Uh, you, you, you saw what Ro uh, Chief Justice Roberts wrote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. when you see uh, what uh, is written, the normal situation is before something is written in the conference, people in some form or other uh, will discuss what they're thinking of writing. Not always and, and not uh, identical, but there's usually some discussion. Did, did you think that a compromise was possible before the leak, around 15 weeks? I usually hope for compromise. <laughs> so you were hopeful there could be a compromise? Oh, you want to put words in my mouth. <laughs> I, I'm careful what I say on this. Because I say our interests are different. Mm -hmm. I don't want to make news. I've written what I thought. Mm -hmm. If you think there is news in here or in the dissent, Go right ahead. Well, but uh, I don't want to say something in addition. Yeah. Uh, just, to, just to be clear, though, did you think a compromise was possible? I always think it's possible. Mm -hmm. I, always, I always think it's possible, usually up until the last minute. Were you surprised that the internal investigation didn't determine who was actually behind the leak? Sabah. Did you... 
Yeah, you better ask. If you want to ask that question, but somebody who knows something about it, ask the people who do internal investigations like yeah. that. They're the people to ask, and um, you know, and that they, they occur all over the government. But did you feel betrayed by the leak? That's a stronger way of putting what you've already asked. I, I, I was disappointed. I was uh, sorry about the leak. Mm-hmm. And... Do you have a theory of the case? Do you think that the leaker was someone who wanted to sound the alarm about Roe being overturned or wanted the draft opinion to be locked in place? Do you have your own theory? Do I have my theories about it? Yes. But you're not going to share them with me. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Can you talk about yeah. it in that broader context, though? Do you, do you have a sense of what the motive of the leaker was? That's part of the theory. <laughs> And given, I, fair to say, how the fact that you're disappointed, you were not behind this in any way. <laughs> I'm not even going to say that. I mean, of course, they, I, I'd be amazed if it was a judge. Okay. There. But I don't know. You know, we never know. Dobbs happened in part, obviously, uh, because Amy Coney Barrett replaced uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg on the court who passed away while she was still on the bench. Do you think there should be age limits on the Supreme Court? I, I, I've said, and, and I think it's true, I, I don't think that's harmful. I mean, if you had long terms, for example, they'd have to be long. Why long? Because I don't think you want someone who's appointed to the Supreme Court to be thinking about his next job. And so a 20-year term, I don't know, 18 long term, fine. Fine. I don't think that would be harmful. I think it would have helped, uh, in my case, it would have helped me having, it would have avoided for me going through difficult decisions. When do you retire? What's the right time? And, and so uh, that would be okay. How difficult was it for you to decide to retire? It's difficult. <laughs> do you no. miss being on the Supreme Court? Of course. But mm-hmm. yes, but, you know, life, human life is is tough. <laughs> and moreover, you get older. And 85, which I am now. 83. I mean, you see, it's, it, you've been there for quite a while. And other people also uh, should have a chance at these jobs. And uh, at some point, you're just not going to be able to do it. And uh, um, I think I could do it, but nonetheless, there comes a time you have to figure out what's the right time. There are lots of considerations. Was the ideological balance on the court part of your consideration to retire when you did? There were a lot of things there and probably part. More of my conversation with the former justice airs next Sunday. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.